All right, so in this example, basically what we're trying to do is do f of g of x. So basically, if you guys remember the other notation that we used, and we also was on your homework, was fog, the f in the composition symbol of g of x. It's the exact same thing, all right? But this example, basically, they're asking you to apply f of g of x. Now I'm going to just do a random example here, again, just to remind you guys. If I just pretend, let's just actually use h of x. Let's use a different function. Let's pretend h of x was 2x minus 1. If I did h of 0, then you'd plug now 0 in for x. Everybody is OK with evaluating functions like that, right? Yes, sir. So if I said, what's h of um, p of x? Well, then you're just going to plug in what is p of x in for x. Agreed? So this example is basically asking us to take my f of x function and then plug in g of x. So it's really saying, what is g of x? I'm going to plug that in squared minus 2. Well, g of x, we actually have a function for g of x. g of x is the square root of, square root of x plus 1. So that's going to look like, oops. So that's going to be square root of x plus 1 squared minus 2. Now we just need to remember that inverse operations, the square root of something squared, those are inverse operations, right? If you add one, subtract one, those are inverse operations. If you square and take the square root, right, those are inverse operations. So those undo each other, and we're left with x plus 1 minus 2, which is just going to equal x minus 1, right? Now we need to identify the domain. And there's two constraints on the domain that we've talked about in this class. Either you do not have a part of your domain when you are dividing by 0, so x cannot equal 0. And you cannot take the square root of a negative number, so x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Do you have any either one of those constraints here? No. So your domain is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. And the other thing to think about this, guys, is that produces a line. Right? A line is going to be true for all real numbers. Right? Do you guys remember we talked in class? What would, there's only, um, there's a way that we talked about when, when we don't have numbers in our domain. Does anybody, what that looks like in a graph? Does anybody remember what that was called? Rhymes with uh, pistinuity. Discontinuity. discontinuity. If there's a discontinuity in your graph, you know there's going to be some problems that are not a part of your domain. For instance, here, there's no discontinuity, right? That's continuous. So it's all real numbers. This has what we call hyperbolas, where there's asymptotes. Remember infinite discontinuity? There's these asymptotes. So therefore, that's why 0 is not a part of it. Here, there's not a discontinuity, but you can see that the graph is only positive. There's no negative portions of the graph. That's why x has to be greater than or equal to 0 for it to be a part of the domain. right? But we also talked about um, holes. right? You could have jump discontinuities. There's a whole bunch of different things. But the only discontinuities we talked about is, or the only constraints we talked about on our domain is rational and um, taking the square. And that's it. So in our example, x minus 1, we don't have either. So that's why 